Hi there, Randy Green here and welcome to another podcast for the Hall Academy Future Humanities. I have dragged Josh out of his Danish learning processes um, to have a conversation about good and evil, but I'm not going to do the normal good and evil here. I'm going to go in a different direction. So Josh doesn't know what I want to talk about, but I need Josh to ask the right questions and to to listen to what I have to say. So I am both here in what I'm doing here, directing towards Josh, as well as towards you, and I find that to be the most optimal way to do this. Of course, I could have talked it on my own, as I always do in my podcast, but here I want some intelligent counter-questions, and with that, uh, push me into some other timelines where I might be able to add some more information to the narrative or to the understanding I want to provide here. This is just done on top of my head. Uh, why do I want to do this podcast today? Uh, it kind of came from I had a session with uh, one that's doing my material And we had a conversation there where I want to tie this into some of the topics that were written in that conversation, in that session. One of them was about how do I know what's good and what's evil when I do this energy work? When I do my inner work and my clearing work, how do I then know what's actually good and what's bad? And in that we get a little bit trapped. I want to begin there and then I want to expand it later on. But we begin when we do this work being very confused about what's right and what's wrong and what's good and what's bad. And I'm deliberately choosing these words. I could be more uh, intelligently working around it and say there is no such thing as good and evil. There is no such thing as right or bad. I know that because I'm a psychotherapist there. We do not work with the concepts of right or wrong or good or bad. But this is what is within most people as part of this reality. They they subconsciously or consciously value systems within the thought process of good or bad or good or evil. So what is good or bad? And here I will do a little bit of psychodynamic explanation saying, well, when we talk about when we work with energy and we work in inner work and we work with psychological processes, whatever they lead to, because this all depends on who and what we are. So there's not one fit for all method here. There are many different methods. Please keep that in mind. But when we talk about what uh, in psychodynamics is seen as good or bad, we could reframe that using a different narrative, which is important because frames of references as well as language define how we perceive ourselves. I know this is heavy material and Josh is getting tired eyes already, but bear with me. This is important, people. This is very important. These are the psychodynamics we need when we begin to work on the timelines. When we begin to work with our higher order capacities, we kind of need to have the foundation of the, within the human-based program to understand why we're doing what we're doing and how we can energetically tailor our energy work in a different manner by using the right words, by using the concepts that are more in alignment with a conducive type of approach to our work instead of having this good or bad dichotomy, as it's called so fancifully, if that's even a word, um, where we go into these polarities of dynamics. They can be used with as well. Sometimes it is good to work with the concepts of what is evil and what is good. But that's a kind of what we call psychological process we have to do to ourselves and perhaps even write down, what do I perceive as evil? What do I perceive as good? And get that clear for ourselves. And in that also look into, uh, not necessarily, but there's a lot of programming going on in reality, what is good and what is bad. It's not mentioned this is good, but there are different words, there are different ways it plays out as program content, which affects us subconsciously. So if we kind of get up to into the, the understanding of, okay, what is good and what is bad for me? And let me put it this way. I, I more like to say what is conducive for me in my progression journey? What works in a way so that I can expand my awareness? That I would see as good, even though that some of the things that comes my way, and I know Josh will agree on that one, when I'm in the depth of the really heavy stuff, I don't see it as, oh yeah, I'm learning so much from this. There I'm just completely absorbed in whatever process that I'm in, crying and being angry and finding the world to be completely injustice because I'm not being victimized, but I can feel this is very... Um, 
unjust, that this is breaking all the rules, this is breaking all the laws of how civilized, uh, advanced civilizations are to interact with each other. These are some of the things, that's why I want to talk about this, because this is also a podcast for the future. And I know we have already got up in the ionosphere, we have already got the future cubes are already here, and they are literally transmitting from into either one of the future timelines we don't want to be part of, but also being snatched on the other side. So so this is me really going in depth in a different uh, perspective of how to work with information. So I'm not only talking to Josh and to you, I'm also talking to some of our guys um, and girls in the future that have gone on this mission, because that was what that specific session was about. Those of us who have come back from the future and have kind of not really been informed about what was really going on here. And so I'm working on many different angles here, and I'm sorry people out there, they're thinking linearly, remember we work in patterns. So I'm touching different levels of a holographic network, information network, where I tie different pieces and snippets together so that they create a hole in the understanding. And that the reason why I do that is because I'm working on the different nodal points in the holographic architecture of your human brain, working with what we call the higher order types of energies. And they don't work linearly. That is uh, an effect of the current type of configuration we have on this planet. And I kind of feel that, Josh, you might have a question. (laughs) Well, I want to hear more about the cubes, just the highest level here that you mentioned so far. So if that's new, there was not much said about that, then we can start um, addressing this on other more conventional levels. But... That kind of ties back to remember our conversations on the new inner domains and the new councils that are coming that were part of that. So we have now got a new level of reality attached to this one. And is it good or is it bad? That's the good question because it depends on who and what we are. For some, it will feel as a negative. For others, it will feel as a positive. But it depends on who and what we are. So that's all I can say. This is an enormous advanced type of technology. I can see it in my head. I have no human language for it. So that's all I can say. And I call it deliberately cubes, Mm. but compared to the fifth dimensional cubes, they're not cube formed, but they have the same function as the cube. They are tailored through, uh, well, we could say the old type of cubes are connected to lineages and racial grid works, where the future cubes that we're here talking about are tied to a council. So that's something completely different. So that means that whoever participated in this council are also coding the cube, but it goes into this coding as I talked about. I can't remember which podcast we talked about that, but it goes in and it it literally scans whoever is part of the council at that moment, because there's no time, but, but what else can I say? At that nodal point in the holographic network where they decide to holographically project themselves into the holographically created room or sphere for that conversation to take place. So it's not an actual reality, it's an artificially created reality, but it's not a negative, it's for the purpose created reality from where this technology then unfolds as a exemplification of the different groups that are present there. That means that this technology changes from time to time. It depends on who's present in the council meeting. So that's a completely different type Mm. of technology. And thereby, whatever that technology is meant to do, it's not meant to have its own purpose. It's meant to literally combine the different levels of uh, genetic and consciousness potentials that are represented in the council members. And from that connect to the different past, present and future timelines from where it can process the most optimal outcome of what is seen and perceived when it scans this reality compared to what they offer in the councils. So this is when people ask, what is, how can we change this planet? Well, the councils work this way. They don't have individual opinions. They don't have individual, oh, this is the right way to do or not. It is always in the progressive worlds, which I see as quote unquote good, and for the, the highest good of the many, that's implied in that one, that the ones that team up are always focused in what is the most optimal optimal outcome for all involved 
knowing the holographic network, the reality field configuration, where we know the 12 universal lineages, actually they're up to 16 now because new have come in place since we talked about this the last time. So it's kind of outdated to talk about the 12 universal lineages. We have now got 16 and that will grow exponentially as the new realities begins to unfold with a new type of humanities that are coming there. So they're also part of the new inner domain um, races and civilizations that are coming our way, because the question is why they're doing that, why they're backtracking into our timeline, connecting us to the future timelines. That is because it's like towing us out of the abyss. And what means towing us out of the abyss? Does it mean the planet? Does it mean humanity? Does it mean the world that we know of it? No, it literally connects to the holographic architecture behind our solar system. So this is done on a systemic level. Not because of humanity, we're so grand and purposeful and fantastic human beings, which we are, of course, uh, but there's so much other things going on behind us and in the fields of this reality. And we have got other, um, we could call them hub races that have joined in, in conglomerates that are now pushing their hubs our way. And that's why they can now pu push their hub, which the councils are of these different groups that team up with their technology, connect to the timelines, create nodal points in our holographic network from where they can create an other dimensional progressive type of hub from which the technology and the solutions they are coming up within the councils can via that quote unquote cube be transferred to a, what we call a Syrian cube inside this system because in the sixth dimension we've got the white cubes left transferred into that one and this sixth dimensional level is outside the reach of the dark forces here they only go to the fifth they have seven eight and nine but that's connected to the dark galactic core and that's a different configuration so that means remember to breathe randy so that means that they cannot intercept this yes so these are not only are they like um kind of high level translation cubes and and meeting cubes like Zoom and Chat GDP on steroids. Not to compare at right, all. Right, exactly. It, but it also acts as a kind of a reality administrator. And um, no, no, no. Okay. What it does is that these uh, the original Syrian cubes that mm. were part of the original restoration programs were part of what we call the holographic teaching system mm. that connects to the human brain. The original version of it, not the downsized version we have today that is connected to artificial fourth and fifth dimensional cube systems that are working under the control of the dark forces. Let's just put it that way. The ones we don't want to go to school with and the ones we don't want to go to party with, the ones we don't want to be a cop part of. So let's just put it that way. The, the bad bunch and in, in the, the, the bad guys and girls in, in the class, right? The bullies. So we don't want to be part of them. So no, what this does is that it activates the original white Syrian holographic teacher system that ties into a reality configuration that has been dormant actually since before the time of Atlantis. Because what the Atlanteans and what happened during the time of Atlantis with some of the fifth dimensional that came from other systems, including the lunars that came here as refugees, they re-engineered the, the, some of the Syrian cubes that were in alignment with their configuration. And by that, altered the holographic teaching system to be in alignment with their projects here. And that's what every single extraterrestrial group have done whenever they entered in, they mess around with the holographic uh, configuration behind our system, the architecture, and with that also mess around with the, the architectural, if we can call it, the architecture technology. Uh, so it adapts and fits the purpose of the different groups that are here. But there were some of the higher order or the six dimensional Syrian cubes that they didn't want it. They were just too, what we would call good. They were too oriented. Their program itself, the cube program itself was completely aligned with the rules and principles and laws of the highest good of the many. So they were quote unquote, what we would call good. And what does good mean in terms of this future technology? It means to be inclusive. It means to accept. It means to have empathy and understanding of the other that we're dealing with, whether it's telepathic or it's uh, via um, holographic 
uh, transmission, transmission, which is what kind, what I call the holographic uh, interference or the holographic, I forgot the word I call it in the older material, but there's this kind of, you can either have vertical from above to below where you have a more advanced civilization that works in conducive ways with the ones that are lesser evolved, using the holographic teaching system, helping them with their holographic architecture, going in and teaching them the ways how they can operate and upgrade their holographic architecture. It is not done by ascension mechanics, it's done by teaching the way to do it. And the higher order civilizations there go in and act as role models, as mentors, as facilitators. They don't go in and say, I know better because nobody knows what is the right way to work with energy because there is technically no good and no good or bad. There is no good. There is no bad. There are different ways to do things. But what we compare it to is what is the effect it has on our energy system? What is the effect it has on others? And what is the effect it has on our reality field? And with that goes into what is the effect it has on the holographic architecture of all of the universes that are involved in the system that we take part of. And that's for the highest good of the many. We always choose solutions that leads to the highest progression rate for all. So that's why we can say that's what I see as good. That's where we are using the holographic architecture, the holographic technology, not having creating technology that that is dissimilar for us or detached from us, but actually is part of us. So we are in constant um, interaction with it, monitoring it, developing it as we develop our technology develop. And it's always calibrated for the highest good of the many. So that means that if we by some chance go in and come in contact with some of what we call the timeline event uh, inverted type of genetics that leads to the breaking down of the gene codes as well as the consciousness potentials. If we come in contact with that, our individualized tailored technology will then tell us something's wrong, beep, 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 red alert. And then instead, it's not going in and reconfiguring, it's not going in and and and, and doing it for us. It scans us and tells us this is what you need to do. But the operator, the human itself, us, we need to do the energy work that's necessary to, from what we get from our own technology, it tells us build into our holographic energy system. This is what's wrong. This is the diagnosis. This is what do you call it? Um, a kind of an assessment. I forgot the word here. Diagnosis. Yes. And goes in and tell you, you need to do something, but we're the one that needs to do it in energy work. And that's some of the things I talk about in my advanced energy work, how to learn to work with these negative forms of, from the negative alien agenda, uh, technologies that they have put into us that are technically working in the same way. But instead of leading us to progression, that leads us to the what we could call the inclusive work for all for the highest good of many timelines, it then pushes us into service to self timelines, where we then become part of the different projects that are uh, tailored from the, the, the different groups that are here now only working to sustain their own survival. So that's how I would say in a very elaborate way what is good and what is bad in terms of higher order civilizations. Before we dig in, the other piece that nugget that you just dropped really briefly that I feel maybe it's not the time, maybe it is to say something about the three extra universal universal lineages that have been added. Then we can go back four. Oh my goodness, let me count on my fingers again. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, because 12, now six. Okay, so yeah, basic math. I don't know anything about mm -hmm. it. I was just being autocorrected. <laughs> from my own teaching system that then scanned and said, no, no, not 12 anymore. These lineages are gone. They have been outworn. Uh, and that's the problem with our solar system as it is. And that's why we have gone under the intervention protocol of the future civilizations, because they can see that our original lineageal potentials are now so outwatered that the extra infusions needs to be put into a holographic network unless they want this whole solar system to collapse. And that's not in their interest. Not because humanity is special, but because our solar system is special. Keep that in mind, very important. But with that, as it goes into the holographic network of a reality field, since our holographic architecture behind this physical form originally were tied intrinsically to the holographic uh, configuration or architecture of our reality, which I talk about in the transition sciences, 
That means that when they amplify the solar system holographic architecture and all of the original technologies that work for what we call progression dynamics, those of us who are part of these original programs, we will then get a sidekick from that as a byproduct. It will put infusions into our original holographic architecture, which of course will make us light up in a way that will then of course give an alarm signal for the dark forces that will then come in and try to counter that, not to forget. But it will give us an infusion that gives us a better, what we call a possibility rate or a better rate of... Um, Yes, possibility rates, best translation, so that we have larger potentials to work with. But it all comes down to us. Nobody's going to do it for us. Nobody's going to teach us how to do this. When they amplify the original searing cubes under the six-dimensional holographic teaching system, then it amplifies, should, in theory, amplify our own inbuilt holographic teaching system, which then if we do do clearing work and do go into inner processes and really begin to work with our higher order architecture, we'll be able to tap into our own holographic uh, teaching system that's built into a holographic architecture. Sorry about this, it's very convoluted with these words. But with that understanding that Amplifying the solar system library and holographic teaching system has a ripple effect into our individual holographic teaching system, which then should activate the scanning potentials of our higher order energy system and begin to give us information of what we need to do to repair it. But if we are too locked into the human based program mindset and clocked in the three lower fields of human emotionality and determining what's good and what's bad and what's right and what's wrong because we want to live up to the outer requirements of our everyday life human programs, then we will miss the inner instructions which many people will see as intuition. They will override it because no, then I'll lose this or then I'll lose that or that's not the right thing to do and I've not been taught that that way and society tells me to do this or that and then because if that happens we have a default system built into the original holographic architecture and that's why they're pumping this in because if nobody can catch these waves of activation that's part of the new grand cycle that does that clean up all the old stuff activate it so we can work with it and integrate it and if it's not being caught then the system itself begins to shut down these pockets because then it's determined by the technologies themselves and the future civilizations and everybody who's part of this hub can then see by the inbuilt rate of progression that is not being met and then it goes into a similar like a business or anything else if it goes under 30 percent momentum of energy uh, what we call the vitality rate if that's not longer longer pro- uh, possible to to work with then the system itself has a fail safe mechanism that says shut down because now it becomes a danger to the rest of the systems that are connected to the solar system so that's what we're dealing with here that's why those of us who, and that's where I want to go into the future humanities and, and their mission statements, those of us who did come from the future, we came in, as many have heard before, but I'm giving it a different twist here. We came in to connect to the holographic network from where we could be the amplifiers of the original code system, original configuration, so that we could literally be the, what we call the lighthouses, not as in kindness and compassion and loving his and that and whatever that we have been brainwashed with in the spiritual community, so for saying it so, but that that's a different branch. I'm not saying anything against this, but I'm talking from a fifth cycle perspective here, people. So this is not tribal information. This is where we really work hardcore scientifically. What do we need to do to make sure that this solar system doesn't fall into the dark grids? And that's what we're here to do. And that's why many of us that came in from the future were targeted already from birth, even when we were in the womb of our mothers. And we came in without knowing how bad it actually was here because the old world order races had created a cloaking around the solar system with the artificial fourth and the artificial fifth, which we couldn't see. So we didn't know it was there. They had made a cloaking that were in alignment with the original progressive councils of what we call the reseeding civilizations of the fourth cycle that were reseeded after the fall of Atlantis. 
They showed a false imagery in the councils. They deliberately met up into the councils, holographically interactive, uh, showing a reality that didn't exist. That's why we have this beautiful planet. It is looking from outside as if everything is harmonious. With the areas where we have some really severe dark nodal points, they are cloaked via shields, so it can't be observed from outside. So that means that the scanning technology, which they learn to manipulate, is not sending back the correct information to the future. And that's been part of some of the work I've been doing here as well, sending the right, not because I value what's right and what's wrong, but because my system scans whatever's going on with me, whatever the different groups that are pulling me in are doing to me is being scanned and then transmitted back to the council so they can see, oh, this is what's going on. If it doesn't get intercepted and manipulated in the, in the transfer, right? Could absolutely do so, but my genetics are a little bit special in that manner, so... Yeah. Well, let's bring this back down to um, to the base program, all the way back down to that. And I'll just give a brief thing of where I stand. I'm pretty much in alignment with all of this. Uh, you know, what's good, what's bad, what's good, what's evil, what's right, what's wrong. And I think on a very mundane, uh, everyday level, uh, people know this for themselves. Or some people don't, but I would say people know what's good and bad, right and wrong for themselves, right? Uh, and then some people will say what's good and bad for other people. And to sidestep this whole thing, though, and I'm not saying... So on a relative level, yes, there are things that are evil and things that are not evil or good, I would say. Uh, and now, is it universal or not? I don't know. But we, we, I, I think that's one way. But on an ultimate level, I agree, too. It's kind of a perception. Because what can be good for one person... Another person might think that's bad and vice versa. Unless we really talk about some of the really so, severe eighth dimensional energies from the or technology from the Orion system that only has one sole purpose, and that is to go in and literally consume whatever comes in contact with. So we can say, we can agree on that one. Yeah, that's probably evil. So then where this comes down to, to, to sidestep that, but still be of use and benefit, I like to look at it as what's skillful and what's unskillful, what's wise, what's unwise, what's helpful and what's not helpful. And uh, one thread running through a lot of this for me is non-harm or non-ill will uh, as, as an... Um, as maybe a guiding force for the most part. The other thing I would add is, because we talk about the highest good for ourselves, others, and the reality field. And the only thing I might add to that is the long term, mm -hmm. perhaps, too, mm -hmm. because it might be a short term payoff, but, and that's good, you know, but it also needs to be factored into uh, more long term the way I mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. um, but then we come into with that one two things first and foremost in a way it needs a little bit explain nation of what is is ill will and these kind of things but mm -hmm. when you say what is good for me and others and that that's not a value based mm -hmm. uh, judgment mm -hmm. it ha it comes from the energy system itself so in that way what is good for me as an individual what is progressively conducive for my progression rate and that is that whenever I work with something and I transform it I get an energy burst that kind of lifts me up energetically and activates more of my progression potentials. That is what is good for me mm -hmm. as if I work in a way that that amplifies me and vibrates me up to be able to oscillate a type of vibrational energy that allows me to activate my brain field from where I can access the radiation energies, from where I can access the holographic realities, from where I can process the information of this world and at the same time find solutions to what is necessary for me to rebuild my holographic architecture because if I do that and then work in ways so I can maintain it which is all that my life is about right now because the the level of counter that comes in on an everyday basis is now literally trying to shred me to pieces and push me into the negative timelines so my work right now is just everyday day, minute to minute survival literally as it is right now and that's that's not where I wanted to go with this whole kind of work that I began years ago. I thought I could really go in and make a difference for others as well, teaching this for others, just to understand that the more I was actually getting involved in the work
work with others, the more I got in work, in, involved with the factions that were behind whatever was going on. And the, the more difficult it became for me to do anything until literally now I feel I'm, I'm like in a house confinement. I can barely do anything before I get some kind of counter program running in and making sure that I don't amplify further, that I don't get more of my vitality rate doesn't rise, that I don't get into the contact with the progressive dynamics and by that the, the six dimensional Assyrian system so I could amplify that and begin to pump in this high level of information that is needed to be pumped in and that's part of my mission statement to do that so I can amplify information so what they do instead is that they, they put all sorts of things my way to amplify the negative side so I amplify their levels which I don't so my whole work is now just clearing that out and clearing that out they load me up and pull me in and do all sorts of shenanigans and then I can all I can do is just to maintain my own energy system and and not get too affected by it and literally see my whole configuration turn dark which I then have to clear out and then I get in contact with forces that are that are so ancient on this planet <laughs> that I really don't want to be part of from the to home as it said in, in in Genesis so so that's the game that's going on for me right now but here I got one window of opportunity where I am in contact that's why we're doing this podcast so it's important to make that podcast now get it out there so people can hear this and also understand that right now for those of us who are doing this yes we want to make a difference for whoever and whatever but for me, I know it, I'm not talking on the behalf of everybody that's doing this, just so you guys know out there, there and girls, that right now it's all about maintenance. It's about whatever we have achieved so far. If it was difficult before, at least for me, it's now become 10 times more difficult. So, so that's what I'm doing right now. And the moments I have where I can produce something, of course I do for others. But the whole game that we're in right now is literally to prevent us from actually going out and helping others because as I said in the Gospels, which is part of the original teaching system, is kind of where there's one, there's definitely, there's the first of many. But if we become two, then we become literally two that can work together and amplify each other. If we become pr- three, it's a trinity and there we begin to go into a spiral. If we become four, we can begin to work on different dimensional levels. So this is where the are trying their very best to prevent us from actually teaming up and if we do team up create wedges in between all the time so we don't get the amplification vector or factor playing in the one thing that struck me with this is the the high energy i know when i was looking into your work early on i was just drawn to the amount of energy that was just brought through in the videos and stuff and then you talk about polarity right so uh, I guess one question that's coming up is, is there a way to master energy where the negative doesn't um, come into it as much? So there's a, a maybe a, a balancing of energy, but also uh, with a counterbalance to energy itself, maybe tranquility, um, maybe these calming things like uh, types of samadhi, basically meaning an unshakable, unmovable mm. mind and this equanimity type thing. Do you feel those might be a, a counterbalance to while energy is being mastered, uh, mastering the more wholesome, skillful types of the counterbalance to energy instead of crashing and burning and, and things like this? You know what I mean? So, mm. master, uh, 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 counter, uh, the, pol- a different type of polarity mm. to, to to energy. Yeah, let, let mm-hmm. me answer that one mm-hmm. first. It depends on our lineage. It depends on who or what we are energetically and genetically, literally. So, so to put it that way, uh, that approach does not work for me because of who and what I am and because of my mission statement. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm not here to uphold what we could call the uh, Kalikar code programs. I'm not here to uphold the interconnectedness in Samadhi or in what we could call uh, emotional inclusivity. It, that's a huge part of my program. I've been training it. I activate it in this life as well. The first many years of my practice, aside from the psychological work, was meditation and contemplation work where I work with my heart field. 
And that's the first thing I activate. And I gave that advice today uh, in my session as well as with others. We need to activate that level first so we can balance back all the time. If I hadn't worked on that first, I probably wouldn't have gone so far as I am today with the levels. You know that, Josh, what I'm dealing with on a constant daily basis. If I hadn't reconfigured my heart field to be by default, it's completely coded into all levels unless they really get me hard and then they get reconfigured into the dark stuff. But I know how to reconfigure it back into the inclusivity and the Kali Kaa code, which is behind the four cycle tribal communities where we learn to work as teams, where we learn to work for the highest good of the many, where we learn to work for each other's highest level of progression rate, where we do that with kindness and that feeling you get in Samadhi, that bliss you get there. That's the Kali Kaa code that ignites and give you that light feeling in your heart that gives that interconnectedness feeling where you really feel kindness to the one you're talking to, where you feel your heart feel just expands into a huge explosion where you just want to go into the inclusivity of you and I together to work this so we can progress both of us to our highest abilities, to whatever we are supposed to be as part of our lineages, lifting uh, as as uh, we say, lifted in flock, as we say it in Danish, but really bear the burden of all that are involved in this, which has been twisted into the savior that will bear the burden of the many and then become the first of the many that completely succumbs and self-sacrifice, which is not the intent of the heart field. For me, because of the prohibiting technologies and the ways that the old world order lineages that call it, that join the colonizers, they took away the tribal technology, the Kalika code, and shifted it into a hive mind structure, shifted it into distortion fields where samadhi or the blissful state that many achieve in meditation are now part of the astral plane and the distortion fields. So instead of amplifying the, 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 the um, peripheral nervous system and activating the heart field in a manner where we feel inclusivity and understanding and empathy and, and caring about what's going on in the world and others and are being kind to the next of kin and being kind to every life form all depending on what it is if it comes into your field and attacks you then of course you're not like this this well-meaning jesus that turns the other chin and then being crucified because that's that's distortion as well but kindness has many forms so that also means that all depending on who and what we are, kindness will be played out differently. That's a principle to the balancing principle. So what is kindness? That is balance of energy. So instead of having a polarity, which is the fifth dimensional feature, but in the fourth dimension, we have opposition where something seems dissimilar. And if we work with inclusivity and go into the, the kind of what's called compassion, but caring, I would like that, or empathy, where we understand who and what that is in front of us. Some kind of, let me do an example that is easier to understand because between humans, it has a different approach. It looks differently. We're not doing psychodynamics here. But for instance, in some of my work, if I come across a, a, a mantid, my, my, inter, my encounter with that will all depend on how it plays out its energies. So it's about who makes the first move when we talk about advanced civilizations. And the, the negative races, they are very tribal and very warring oriented. So their rules of engagement are different than the human civilizations, the solar system human civilizations and the future human civilizations because we have done whatever is in, in our power not to be warring. And that's where the Kali Ka code came in. And we can do, if you just do Egyptian translation, the soul is called Ka. So it's kind of soul to soul connection where we understand each other, we, the core of what we are. That's because I have that configuration, which is technically a piece of consciousness technology. I'm able to see what's in front of me and I know right away if this is someone who wants to interfere in what we call a detrimental way to my progression, not self-upholding, not warring, not battling, not creating uh, negative situations because I meet, I meet with the inclusivity to begin with. I have no ill-mindedness when I see someone. I always see the one that comes into my field as this is a life form that wants to do the best for me, even though I already get the heads up long before it even comes close to me. I know what its intentions are. So I know if it's the intention is to attack or the intention is to communicate or the intention is to literally show me something. 
But whenever they enter into my field, they reconfigure my field because the sixth dimension, as I talk about in transition science, is to have the ability to imprint. And that's part of the advanced level, the Kali Kar code. So the Kali Kar code of the soul to soul or the progression sciences, as we know of them, are engineered to create larger inclusivity, are created to align us more and more in the groups, in the, the, the lineages that we are part of. And by everyone piecing in together into that pattern, lifting each other, the whole lineage can literally jump up uh, into higher levels of progression. So the opposition dynamics, they go into, yes, you might be dissimilar from me, but we can use this for progression. We can use this to transform energy in each other. And that's where the Kala Kar code comes in. We understand our differences, but how do we then learn to work together? And that's the Kala Kar code is technically a translation device that helps us to understand each other better. So we don't go into the warring tribal uh, segregation dynamics, but instead go in and say, how do we learn to work together? How do we learn to progress together? How do we learn to join the forces of the knowledge of your holographic architecture and my holographic architecture so that we reach the highest progression rate? Very cool. Now, you talked earlier about... Um, kind of knowing what negative things to eliminate in our energy work and things like this, besides folks doing your courses, um, what would you recommend people uh, do, especially in this time and maybe more of a timeless thing, mm -hmm. you know, maybe if they have some blind spots that they can't see themselves? Mm -hmm. There are no one fit for all. So the only thing I can do, I'm limited to my teachings. I don't know. I'm, let me put it this way. I could know, but I don't want to know because uh, all that's going on out there, what matches everybody, whatever. I'm here for specific groups and specific lineages. Everybody who's here is specific for a specific group and specific lineage. So there's not one fit for all. There's no system that's better than others. It depends on where we come from. It depends on why we're here. It depends on when we came here and it depends on what we're here to do. So when we talk about the future humanities that have chosen to travel back, each and one of us has a very special mission statement and that is completely individual. So that means we, are not, we did not come in as teams. We did not come in as a group uh, entry, we came in as soul, um, soul riders <laughs> coming in with little things to do because when we work from the, the aspect of a pattern, then you understand if you see it there and there and there on different timelines, then eventually we create the pattern that will instigate the changes. So there's no need to come in as a group, but you come in with a very specifically tailored energy system. So when people say, well, how do I activate it? What do I need to do? What is the best thing? And I'm working on already now some of the solution for some of the things that are not in my class material because I always work in depth with all certain. Then there's that angle that needs to be explored and worked with. And then I have long periods where I don't do anything because I'm being halted and, and, and pushed into timelines where I can't do my work. But in terms of what would be the best way to go around this, as I advise anybody who comes my way that are in alignment with what I can offer, that are in alignment with the, the approaches I offer to this reality as it is today, that is, if you have to buy one course, then it would be the whole basic 4D energy work. And learn to work with your heart field. Learn to amplify the heart field, as you also talking about, Josh, in inclusivity and ill-minded, not ill-minded, but in, in... The opposite of that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what you were saying. Mm. Um, not because I didn't want to remember, it's just a different sure. terminology than the one I use. But being in, in that state of where we can recalibrate our heart energy and our heart field to connect to what we call the progressive timelines or whatever's left of them because some of the first things the colonizers did was of did was of course to completely distort these with all sorts of false so-called good teaching systems that would lead to the awakening or that would lead to the path of liberation or that would lead to ascension that was the first thing they targeted and specifically the ascension has been tailored retailed into what we could call the atlantean projects turning into something completely different. So so with that one, we're a little bit out on uh, uh, 
on an unknown area at as in kind of how to do this and what to do this. So my only advice in this is that there is not one path, there are many paths, but the, it all comes down to, as the ancient Greeks said as well, know thyself. And that means that in our everyday clearing work, the more we clear, the more hours we put into meditation, contemplation. Meditation is learning the still point, is learning to silence the mind. It is learning to become the observer. It's about learning how to be in contact with your body. It's about learning to process the, the energies of the body. It's about being inclusive to yourself, be kind to yourself, nurture yourself, become a plant fruitarian. That's very important. We know how the stomach, the gut, uh, biome is connected to the brain processes so if we eat a lot of food that's unhealthy our brain will not work correctly we need to understand how our body is composed i talk about that as well in the free material not only here out on youtube on, on my website the whole academy website there are the free material people can dive into first and then they can do the progression sciences where there is step one the basic wake up material that is also for free. There are PDF books there where ebooks where I talk about exercise, where I talk about nutrition and how to get into that. These ebooks are there. I show the double hand position. There are course material in the advanced class one to four that is offered for free as well, where I talk about some of the basic steps. So I've got a lot of material out there, but it all comes down to the effort and how people do it, their genetics, that what they have, the viability rate, what is left. If they're highly convoluted in a lot of what we would call karma or distortion energies and tied to a lot of projects that are now... Um, uh, no longer in existence and are collapsing, well, then that will affect their holographic energy system. And by that one, give them more challenges to work with and less potentials to work with. So there is no not fit one fit for all, but it all comes down to our ability to process information, our ability to work with our inner realms, the way we work with the narratives we create ourselves, the psychodynamics of the narratives, and this is where my psychotherapist background kicks in. If we tell ourselves stories of that we are not good enough or whatever's going on, I talk about that in my classes as well, how to work with some of the, the, the feelings that we have, our interpretation of feelings, some of the cognitive schemes we have, these are the stories we tell ourselves, the way we address what's going on, the way we respond to what's going on. That's why the meditation is important because we learn to observe our mind. We learn to understand, yes, right now I'm flooded over by electrochemical uh, substances that not because we're taking them but because perhaps there is some kind of cue program playing out its content on a timeline we can't see but it ripples into this body and we respond to it how do we then clear that one out learning to do that how do we contemplate that is to to literally access and and derive the higher level information content of whatever we choose to study in contemplation how do we learn to do the clearing work as in maintaining our uh, different levels of our energy system, which I teach further than the, the basic 4D energy work. I go into the advanced clearing work as well as in the transition sciences, where I talk about the sciences behind the clearing work on an enormously advanced level that probably is more tailored towards the ones that have come in from the future to remind them of this is what's going on. But also because when, when I came in and my life has been discovering, yeah, I had huge gaps in my mission statement because there's so much I didn't understand. And that's what I've been trying to do in the advanced clearing work, saying you didn't get this from home. <laughs> you need to figure out how to do this. You need to reconfigure your holographic energy system to be able to process that information so you can see it and work with it and clear it out. It will not disappear you'll not do it on a planetary level but you will constantly maintain your own energy system so you can kickstart the mission statement you came with whatever's left of it because most of us have been pushed into other timelines where they have literally worn down our energy system in whatever projects they have found fruitful for them so they could continue their their progression sciences quote unquote their continued, devel continued developmental programs because one of the things that are important in the mission statements from the future was that we had gene codes to recalibrate and restore genes. And that's, that's a huge bomb. 
And that's why we've been targeted so hard and pushed into so many negative programs because they're literally trying to, to extract that code from our energy system so they can apply it to their own. And they have used many of the future human civilizations that have come back, travel back in time to be the breeders within their programs. And we didn't know that when we came here. And that's the key information I'm giving in this podcast. Wow. So maybe you just let that sink in a little bit. And if, if people were considering or are considering getting um, a session with you or an energy system reading, what would they need to know beforehand to be helpful uh, for something like this? Well, I am not for people who just jump in and just go from outside having no pre-knowledge of anything. The ones that come to me, they are typically in the future or they are already, they have been become a, a father or a mother of some of the new kids from the future. And they, they go my way because they push my way. So, so in that manner, if, if they have the prerequisite to do my material, they have it built in, they will be drawn to me because that's part of what I'm here to do. And that's what I'm being prevented to do all the time. Uh, but that's what I'm here to do, amplify what they have already as a kind of what you could call a facilitator project management. You pick up yourself, but I'm not here to tell people what to do. I'm not here to in any way or form give the solutions because you have to exemplify the work yourself. You have to learn to work with your own holographic energy system. You need to learn to understand the teachings from your own holographic teaching system. You need to learn to scan yourself. You need to learn to work with your genetics yourself. I can only say this is part of the mission that you came and then trigger some of the memories that are there. I can trigger portions of the genetics in the conversation because there I can quickly go into. If people do choose to do a reading, then there will be a quite extensive uh, information of the past, but it all depends on what is allowed to be shown in the uh, whole energy system or whole energy system assessment. And what I typically go in and, and do there is I tell people, well, you've got viable genetics or not. And, and not everybody needs to know that. Sometimes it's better not to know that. Plus the activation potential that happens when I do go in and look at the different levels. That's why I also up the price on that one and say, well, right now that's only for a very, very few that can do that. And I recommend that people that do do that, they already have the ability to work with the information I give. Otherwise, it's just a complete waste of money. So in that way, I would say the best advice is that don't look for me for answers but if you do come to me, see it as a kind of facilitator, something you already know, but you are insecure about that knowledge. You need that kick in the butt that tells you you're good enough. You can do this. I can see that what you think is you is you. That what you saw and remember as a kid being telepathic. Yes, you were telepathic as a kid. Or you have this feeling, oh, I come from this. I'm going to say, yes, you do. No, that's a program. No, you're part of a different program. And it's not about me giving the solutions to make people feel better because this, we didn't come here from the future to feel better. We didn't come here because this is the most beautiful place in the whole solar system or the world. We came here because we are here to fix something that has gone so wrong as anything can do. And we're not here to tell humans that they are good and kind and caring and we need to just kiss them on the forehead and then everything would be solved. We have got a holographic energy system behind behind a holographic architecture, behind an entire solar system, that if we don't get in and do our nodal point work, if we don't get in and begin to amplify the hubs and pick up on the information systems we get from the right side, because a lot of working as hubs already from the negative side, thinking they're doing good, but what they're actually doing is amplifying the negative future timelines. And if we don't get in and really learn to discern what is of beneficial for the ones that are doing this, if we, if people are from the negative futures and they are coming here, they are technically doing good for their timelines because they're amplifying these timelines. But since I don't belong to that, I want to go in a different direction. Well, again, relatively what's good and what's bad. So the answer to your question is, I don't have the solutions. I have the method. I have the technologies, I have the sciences, I put it into class material that is takes a lot of time to learn. It's pretty difficult, it's not an easy one. 
The work we get engaged in, it's not about what's good and what's evil. It's not to make us feel better. On the contrary, we wake up and it becomes pretty much more difficult every day. We wake more up. We pull in more opposition. We pull in more polarities, especially if we go into the fifth. So this is about how to do the work that we were actually supposed to do from the very get-go. So is there anything you want to leave folks with, especially anything else you want to say about the kind of bomb you drop there <laughs> we can do this mm. okay we can do this we'll just have to wait for another time about the 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 genetic part that you mentioned okay <laughs> yes. yes because that is individual mm. and that cannot okay. be done on a mm. generic level i've done so far as i can talking about the insectoid the avian the raptor sure. the mammal the humanoid and true human genetics that's all i can give and the more people are getting into this work, another, thank you for mentioning that, mm -hmm. but another piece of that information that's also important is that the classification of what we are as people going in, or oh, I'm a Capricorn, or oh, I'm this, or I'm that, that's a narrative that works for a portion of time, but we then need to let that go. Otherwise, we confine ourselves. So with the genetics that we have, they are flexible. They are changeable. So even though, yeah, I used to be part of the Pleiadian system. Yes, I took some of my education before I entered into this system in some of the older Pleiadian uh, simulation programs that were way before the, 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 the Pleiadian Orion War. And I remember the Pleiadian Orion War. Well, when that happened, it took out rated the, in completely the reality field that I was part of at that time. And I got pushed into the void by, by that and, and came back out. So, so these are part of my memories. So, so in that one, I can say, well, is it important for me to remember I was there? And, and, oh yeah, I had the plate in configuration <laughs> and make myself important on that. No. What is important was, what was the mission there? What was I supposed to learn there? It's not about who we were. It's about what we can do, our capacities. We're not activating to burst into and boost ourselves with, oh, I used to be a Pleiadian, or oh, I used to be a Syrian, or, or, oh, I come from Andromeda. These are just hops. These constellations doesn't exist anymore. They ceased to exist a long time ago. So if we cling on to, oh, I used to be a Pleiadian and only focus on the, the Pleiadian configuration, we will then tie into the timelines that have now been completely consumed by the Orions. And then we'll get ourselves into trouble. Then we will think we are activating through our so and so beautiful plane in genetics without even knowing what they actually are, but because our society's been pumped full of what the Pleiadians are, which they actually are not. These are some of the, the reptoid-infused Pleiadian races that have all this beautiful glamour around them. It's completely dazzling. That's not the sign of invasion techniques. So, so people align with that, and then they get pulled into programs where they have the shimmer and the overlay of being part of something beautiful. But the matter of the fact is that their energy system is completely being drained and harvested beneath their feet because they don't know what they're engaging in. So my strategy in this, I'm not talking from the perspective of the traditional New Age activation, awakening, ascension programs. I'm talking from a completely different get to get to see things as they truly are. We have a turd on the table. What's that turd made of? <laughs> and how do we get rid of it? And it will still smell even though we have removed it and other turds will come. This is not about I clean this, then I'm good to go for the rest of my life. Those of us who came from the futures, we know what's at stake. And realities changes all the time. Realities develop all the time. Or they regress all the time. Or they push forward and go backwards. So it's not about getting to a point where we are then happy and everything is good and fine. Where we can sit in our samadhi and be all cool with that. And feel this great compassion towards the whole world. And then we're done with that. Because I've done my five hours of loving the world today. So I'm good. For me, this, sorry for being a little bit on that one but for me from where, where I come from the futures I come from samadhi is a way to recalibrate our heart field it is not meant as a solution to all it's just a step of the journey so we can always balance back into the reconfiguration that goes with the progressive timelines that's how we balance ourselves back into the right timelines just a little piece of the puzzle yep. yes and the way that we work with our energy system is all about maintaining it so we stay on the right timelines.
when we do the clearing work it's to get our energy system out of the things that have sucked us in because on the holographic levels everything's are interconnected everything work in tandem everything work as opposition or polarity and unless we learn to manage these dynamics which i talk about the transition science as well then we will easily get sucked into an opposition where we don't belong or into an opposition where we don't transform it. We will miss the chances of the chan- ch- chances, sorry about that, of reconfiguration and progression dynamics because we can only progress if we are progressing against something that we don't want to be. So it's, it's this progression about what we are and what we develop into and then we attract through reciprocity, that's principle four, the situations that we need to progress our energy system further. So that's a completely different mindset. It's a mindset of continued progression, of continued expansion, of continued work that needs to be done. But on the right timelines, from the right intention and the right understanding of it, from the right sciences, and the right sciences is intrinsically connected to our energy system. So the right sciences of progression for me is tied to my energy system and not for my entire lineage, but it is tied to myself, others, and the reality I'm part of. And these are the sciences that I unfold in uh, conjunction and in correlation with the energy system I've got. So that's what right for me. If I don't follow that, then I create distortion. Beautiful. Well, I think we got to leave it there, huh? Yeah. Well, I could talk for hours and hours. <laughs> but yes, I think that's that's enough information for today. Um, so for, for that, since I began this, I will also wrap it up. I know I've got more to say. So I'm just, so this is me taking the full advantage of today. But I also know you people out there, there's only so much you can consume on this one. So to put it practically into your everyday life, as is part of the free material as well. First step, um, if you haven't already, find it, it's being played out all over the planet as it is now, become plant fruitarian. The ones that are still meat eaters, I'm not going to say it's good or bad or whatever, but that's those of us who are interested in working for what we call a, a higher vibrational state of our planet, we do not exploit any other life form to uphold our own energy system. So that's what the 12 choices of living, of non-exploitation, of non-usage of anyone else to fulfill our own physical, emotional, mental, or higher energy system, genetic needs, whatever that means. And those of you who really get into the energy work, you also begin to see how that non-exploitation actually goes in and comes in collision with many of the base program human ways of approaching let's just take a simple example is people in relationships are they really working for each other's highest progression rate or are they working to satisfy their own desires and needs and for me that's a quite clear-cut answer to that one but that's just to throw that bone in there so those of you doing this will begin to scrutinize yourself and really begin to observe the way you live the way you act the way you think the way you feel and begin there. Begin becoming the best version of human you can be. And that goes with meditation. Learn to observe yourself. Learn to feel your body. It goes with exercise. It goes with the right type of food. It goes with what we could call a disciplined life. It goes with being strategic in, as I talk about, the change maker material. It becomes, you look at your life and you look at it from above, from a helicopter perspective. Who do I want to be? What do I want to achieve from life? And how do I get there? So that's a little bit of a business mindset. And most people don't think about their life in that strategic way. They just go about day to day and whatever is going on today is just what's going on today. And that's also a good approach in the now. Absolutely be in the now, be observant in the now, be vigilant in the now, do the clear work in the now. But at the same time has this undercurrent of... I know where I want to go with my life. And those of us who are here from the future, we have, that's part of our mission statement. And that runs as a subcurrent telling us what to do and what not to do and learn to follow that. Stop questioning yourself. Believe in what you get, but test it all the time. Does this activate my heart field or does this make me more negative towards the world? When we become into this mood where we just want to blame, shame and whatever's going on, create segregation, we know, yes, I'm activated, 
but it's perhaps not where I actually want to be activated. And then how to transform that back into the what we call the inclusivity. And that's where the meditation, contemplation for samadhi comes in play. So we learn to do that, learn to administer the energies of our heart field, learn to overall bounce back constantly to kindness, constantly bounce back to inclusivity because we can't be there all the time, which I know uh, because of what I'm doing, but I constantly bounce myself back and then rise back up and say, okay, then what do I need to do to continue my progression journey? Yes, I got pushed back a lot, but what do I then do to, what do I need to do to get myself back on track where I know I belong? And that's the other key point here. How do you know that you're actually on the right track? And that's the core essence of all spiritual teaching system that actually has value. That is to remember who you are, the path of remembering, not because we are this or that or whatever, but because there we come in contact with our consciousness potentials and by that our holographic architecture and by that our capacities where we really can begin to change the world. So that's kind of when people ask me a simple question, I have to give a whole lecture, but that's where I want to push this today. So with that one said, have you anything you want to add? Beautiful, Randy. Thanks. Yeah, no, thank you.